In 1960, I was a second year student at Cambridge, wandering aimlessly late one afternoon past the university senate house. Very unusually, the great panel doors were standing open, and from the darkness within came the voice of a lecturer. Out of nothing but curiosity, I slipped in, knowing I was trespassing, and stood in the darkness at the back. I saw a young man talking to a less than full house, and after a few moments, I realized that very oddly, his subject was the theater. And then, this young man began to describe a vision, his vision a permanent acting company, an ensemble, a house style as defined and recognizable as the Moscow Art or the Berliner Ensemble, a company wherein everybody, both the famous and the emergent young, would dispense with hierarchy, where everybody would study and become experts as part of what he intended to be the most accomplished Shakespeare company in the world, and where, the canon of plays would be done always for the relevance to that contemporary world. There was polite applause. The speaker was thanked on behalf of the university. I couldn't be certain, but I thought the name I heard was Hall, Peter Hall. I blundered out into the sunshine, and from that very moment, I was a disciple ready to follow this charismatic man I'd never met to the North Pole, to the far side of the moon, to wherever he chose to go. Like many of us here, I just experienced the Peter Hall effect, his inspirational ability to change lives. This charismatic man, what a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how express and admirable, in action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god. But a man's life is no more than to say one, or is it? How much is it possible to achieve in a single lifetime? Can it be possible for one man in his time, in his professional time, to achieve all this? Item, to change at a stroke the perception of theatre in Britain by discovering and directing a play called Waiting for Godot, after which nothing would be the same again. Surely a big enough achievement to stand as the pinnacle and summation of a career. But this was only the beginning, because then, item, to revolutionize theater by creating not just that visionary Shakespeare company, but that very ensemble who would also bring their highly trained classical expertise to playing new writing, and thereby through his signature phrase, cross-fertilization, become the greatest classical modern company in the world. His Royal Shakespeare Company. And then, item, to exceed all expectation in the establishing and opening of the mighty National Theatre Project moving to the South Bank, requiring not only his own matchless directorial output of works <clears throat> from every age and culture, but also the drive, the skill, the flair, the dynamism, the flamboyance, the cussedness, and, yes, the madness to become one of the greatest impresarios ever. Impossibly, this man was both the great impresario and the great director of the age. So indeed, what a piece of work. And then, when the arts in this country were under such threat, with government financial support declining in real terms, he became the leader and spokesman, passionately arguing the case for the whole arts community. How noble in reason. But then, he led the charge in elevating a small opera house in a big garden called Glyndebourne to the status of one of the most admired opera houses in the world. And then, 
Unsurprisingly, he became, albeit briefly, the artistic director of the nation's leading opera house, Covent Garden. The three most important performance companies in the land being led successively by the same man. How infinite in faculty can there be more? Oh yes, item. He imagined a theater building that dreams are made on. The scale and shape of the auditorium, perfect sight lines, the stage with matchless hydraulic technical facilities. Thus, at the Barbican, he was responsible for a fourth great metropolitan theater enterprise, a state-of-the-art construction, which was, just like him, in form and moving, both express and admirable. Can there be more? Oh, yes. <laughs> Item. This polymath wrote persuasively, challengingly, insightfully, self-confessionally, and hugely entertainingly a series of books. And he made a group of beautifully crafted, highly original films, inspiring, I'm sure, all the participants to observe when he called an action, how like an angel. And then, not done, he decided to go it alone and bravely create a company in his own name, though by then that name was revered and cherished worldwide. And then, while doing these many other things, he played a central part in setting up another beautiful new theater project, built in replica of an Elizabethan playhouse, the Rose in Kingston, which he opened and which was given enormous prominence by his artistic presence, which by then was, well, how like a god. And during all this time, he was forming the greatest of his ensembles, with Leslie, with Jackie, with Maria, with Nikki, his wonderful family, his beloved 